All right, guys, so let's carry on chapter four of Tortilla Flat, John Steinbeck. How Jesus Maria Cocaron, a good man, became an unwilling vehicle of evil. So life passed smoothly on for Pilon and Pablo. In the morning when the sun was up clear of the pine trees, when the blue bay rippled and sparkled below them, they arose slowly and thoughtfully from their beds. It is a time of quiet joy, the sunny morning, when the glittery dew is on the mallow weeds. Each leaf holds a jewel, which is beautiful if not valuable. This is no time for hurry or for bustle. Thoughts are slow and deep and golden in the morning. Pablo and Pilon in their blue jeans and blue shirts walked in comradeship into the gulch behind the house, and after a little time they returned to sit in the sun on the front porch to listen to the fish horns on the streets of Monterey to discuss in wandering, sleepy tones the doings of Tortilla Flat, for there are a thousand climaxes on Tortilla Flat for every day the world wills through. They were at peace there on the porch, only their toes wriggled on the warm boards when the flies landed on them. If all the dew were diamonds, Pablo said, we would be very rich, we would be drunk all our lives. But Bilon, on whom the curse of realism lay uneasily, added everybody would have too many diamonds, there would be no price for them, but wine always costs money. If only it would rain wine for a day now, and we had a tank to catch it in. But good wine, interjected Pablo, not rock gut, swill like the last he got. <laughs> rock gut swill. I didn't pay for it, said Pilon. Some one hid it in the grass by the dance hall. What can you expect of wine you find? They sat and waved their hands listlessly at the flies. Cornelia Ruiz cut up the black Mexican yesterday, Pilon observed. Pablo raised his eyes in mild interest. Fight? he asked. Oh no, the black one did not know Cornelia got a new man yesterday and he tried to come in, so Cornelia cut him. He should have known, Pablo said virtuously. While he was down in the town when Cornelia got her new man, the black one just tried to go in through the window when she locked the door. The black one is a fool, Pablo said. Is he dead? Oh no, she cut him up a little bit on the arms. Cornelia was not angry. She just didn't want the black one to come in. Cornelia is not a very steady woman, said Pablo, but still she has masses sung for her father, ten years dead. He will need them, Pallone observed. He was a bad man and never went to jail for it, and he never went to confession. When old Ruiz was dying, the priest came to give him solace, and Ruiz confessed. Cornelia says that priest was white as buckskin when he came out of the sick room. But afterwards, that priest said he didn't believe half what Ruiz confessed. Pablo, with the cat-like stroke, killed a fly that landed on his knee. Ruiz was always a liar, he said. That soul will need plenty of masses. But do you think a mass has virtue when the money for that mass comes out of men's pockets while they sleep in wine at Cornelia's house? A mass is a mass, said Pilon. Where you get two bits is no interest to the man who sells you a glass of wine, and where a mass comes from is of no interest to God. He just likes them, the same as you like wine. Father Murphy used to go fishing all the time. And for months the holy sacrament tasted like mackerel, but that did not make it less holy. These things are for priests to explain. They are nothing for us to worry about. I wonder where we could get some eggs to eat. It would be good to eat an egg now. Pablo tilted his hat down over his eyes to keep the sun from bothering him. Charlie Mueller told me that Danny is with Rosa Mar Martin, that Portuguese girl. Pilon sat upright in alarm. Maybe that girl will want to marry Danny. Those Portuguese always want to marry, and they love money. Maybe when they are married, Danny will bother us about the rent. That Rosa will want new dresses. All women do. I know them. Pablo, too, looked annoyed. Maybe if we went and talked to Danny, he suggested. Maybe Danny has some eggs, said Pilon. Those chickens of Mrs. Morales are good layers. They put on their shoes and walked slowly toward Danny's house. Pilon stooped and picked up a beer bottle cap and cursed and threw it down. Some evil man has left it there to deceive people, he said. I tried it last night, said Pablo. He looked into a yard where the green corn was ripe and made a mental note of its ripeness. They found Daddy sitting they found Danny sitting on his front porch behind the rose bush, wriggling his toes to keep the flies off. Hey, amigos, he greeted them listlessly. They sat they sat down beside him and took off their hats and their shoes. Danny took out a sack of tobacco and some papers and passed them to Pallone. Pallone looked mildly shocked but made no comment. Cornelia Ruiz cut up the black Mexican, he said. I heard about it, said Danny. Paolo spoke acidly. These women, there was no virtue in them anymore. 
It is dangerous to lie with him, said Pilon. I have heard that there is one young Portuguese girl here on the flat who can give a man something to remember her by if he goes to the trouble to get it. Paulo made disapproving clucking noises with his tongue. He spread his hands in front of him. What is a man to do, he asked. Is there no one to trust? They watched Danny's face and saw no alarm appear there. This girl's name this girl's name is Rosa, said Pilon. I will not say her last name. Oh, you mean Rosa Martin, Danny observed with very little interest. Well, what can you expect of a Portuguese? Pablo and Pilon sighed with relief. How are Mrs. Morales' chickens getting along? Pilon asked casually. Danny shook his head sadly. Every one of those chickens is dead. Miss Morales put up some string beans in jars, and the jars blew up, and she fed the beans to the chickens. And those chickens all died, every one. Where are those chickens now? Pablo demanded. Danny waved two fingers back and forth in negation. Someone told Miss Morales not to eat those chickens or she would be sick, but we scrapped the insides good and sold them to, to the butcher. Has anybody died, Pablo asked. No, I guess those chickens would have been all right. Perhaps he bought a little wine with the money from those chickens, Pilon suggested. Danny smiled cynically at, at him. Miss Morales did, and I went to her house last night. This is a pretty woman in some lights and not so old either. The alarm came back to Pablo and Pilon. My cousin Willie says she is 50 years old, Pilon said excitedly. Danny spread his hands. What is it? How old is she? What is it? How old and years she is? He observed philosophically. She is lively, that one. She owns her house and has $200 in the bank. Then Danny became a little embarrassed. I would like to make a present to Miss Morales. Bologna and Paolo regarded their feet and tried by strenuous mental effort to ward off what was coming, but their effort had no value. If I had a little money, said Danny, I would buy her a box of big candy. He looked meaningly at his tenants, but neither one answered him. I will need only a dollar or two, he suggested. Chin Key is drying squids, Pilon observed. Perhaps he could cut squids for half a day. Danny spoke pointedly. It would not look well for a man who owns two houses to cut squids, but perhaps if a little rent were ever paid. Bologna rose angrily. Always the rent, he cried. You would force us into the streets, into the gutters while you sleep in your soft bed. Come, Pablo, Bilon said angrily. We will get money for his miser, or for this miser, this Jew. <laughs> The two of them stalked off. Where will we get the money, Pablo asked. I don't know, said Pilon. Maybe he won't ask again. But the inhuman demand had cut deep into their mental ease. We will call him Old Jew when we see him, said Pilon. We have been friends for years. When he was in need, we fed him. When he was cold, we clothed him. When was that, Pablo asked. Well, we would have if he needed anything and we had it. That is the kind of friends we were to him. And now he crushes our friendship into the ground for a box of big candy to give to an old fat woman. Candy is not good for people, said Pablo. So much emotion has exhausted Pilon, he sat down in the ditch beside the road and put his chin in his hands and was disconsolate. Paulo sat down too, but he, he, only did, he only did it to rest, for his friendship with Danny was not as old and beautiful as Pilon's was. The bottom of the ditch was choked with dry grass and bushes. Pilon, staring downward in his sorrow and resentment, saw a human arm sticking out from under a bush and then beside the arm a half-full gallon bottle of wine. He clutched Pablo's arm and pointed. Pablo stared. Maybe he is dead, Pilon. Pilon had got his breath and his fine, clear vision again. If he is dead, the wine will do him no good. He can't be buried with it. The arm stirred, swept back the bushes, and disclosed the frowsy face and red stubble beard of Jesus Maria Cocoran. Ay, Pilon, ay, Pablo, he said hazily. Que Tomas? Pilon leaped down the bank on him. Amigo, Jesus Maria, you are not well. Jesus Maria smiled sweetly. Just drunk, he murmured. He rose to his knees. Come have a drink, my friends. Drink deep. There is plenty more. Pilon tilted the bottle over his elbow. He swallowed four times and over a pint and over a pint left the jug. Then Paolo took the bottle from him, and Paolo played with it as a cat plays with the feather. He polished the mouth with his sleeve. He smelled the wine. He took three or four preliminary sips and let a few drops run all around his mouth to tantalize himself. At last, Madre de Dios, que vino, he said. He raised the jug, and the red wine gurgled happily down his throat. Ballone's hand was out long before Pablo had to breathe again. Ballone turned a soft and admiring countenance to his friend Jesus Maria, Hast thou discovered a treasure in the woods, he asked. Has some great man died and named thee in his will, my little friend? Jesus Maria was a humanitarian and kindness was always in him. He cleared his throat and spat. Give me a drink, he said. My throat is dry. I will tell you how it was. He drank dreamily. He drank dreamily. I like, uh, like a man who has so much wine that he can take his time in drinking it. Can even spill a little without remorse. I was sleeping on the beach two nights ago, we said, out on the beach near Seaside. In the night, the little waves washed a rowboat to the shore. Oh, a nice little rowboat, and the oars were there. I got in and rowed it down to Monterey. It was easily worth $20, but trade was slow and only got seven. 
Thou hast money left, Bilon put in excitedly. I'm telling you how it, how it was, Jesus Maria said with some dignity. I bought two gallons of wine and brought them up here to the woods, and then I went to walk with Arabella Gross. For her I bought one pair of silk drawers in Monterey. She liked them so soft they were and so pink, and then I bought a pint of whiskey for Arabella. And then after a while we met some soldiers, and she went away with them. Oh, the thief of a good man's money, Pilon cried in horror. No, said Jesus Maria dreamily. It was time she went away, and then I came here and went to sleep. Thou hast no more money? I don't know, some Jesus Maria. I will see. He fished in his pocket and brought out three crumpled dollar bills and a dime. Tonight, he said, I'll buy for Arabella Gross one of those little things that goes around her higher up. You mean the little silk pockets on a string? Yes, said Jesus Maria. And not so little as you might think either, he coughed to clear his throat. Instantly, Bilon was filled with solicitude. It is the night air, he said. It is not good to sleep out in the open. Come, Pablo, we will take him to our house and cure this cold of his. The malady of the lungs has a good start, but we will cure it. What are you talking about, said Jesus Maria? I'm all right, so you think, said Pilon. So Rudolfo killing thought, and you yourself went to his funeral a month ago. So Angelina Vasquez thought she died last week. Jesus Maria was frightened. What do you think is the matter? It is sleeping in this night air, Pilon said sagely. Your lungs will not stand it. Pablo wrapped the wine jug in a big weed so dis so disguising so disguising it that anyone passing would have been consumed with curiosity until he knew what that weed contained. Bellone walked beside Jesus Maria, touching him now and then under the elbow to remind him that he was not a well man. They took him to their house and laid him on a cot, and although the day was warm, they covered him with an old comforter. Pablo spoke movingly of those poor ones who writhed and suffered with tuberculosis, and that Bellone pitched his voice to sweeten as he spoke with reverence of the joy of living in a little house. When the night was far gone and all the talking wine were gone and outside the deadly mists clung to the ground like the ghost of giant leeches, then one did not go out to lie in the sickly damp of a gulch. No, one got into a deep, soft, warm bed and slept like a little child. Jesus Maria went to sleep at this point, but Lona Pablo had to wake him up and give him a drink. Then Pilon spoke movingly of the mornings when one lay in one's warm nest until the sun was high enough to be of some use. One did not go shivering about in the dawn, beating one's hands to keep them from freezing. At last, Pilon and Pablo moved in on Jesus Maria as two silent hunting Eredales converge on their prey. They rented the use of their house to Jesus for $15 a month. He accepted happily. They shook hands all around. The jug came out of its weed. Pilon drank deeply, for he knew his hardest task was before him. He said it very gently and casually while Jesus Maria was drinking out of the bottle. And you will pay only $3 on account now, Jesus Maria put down the bottle and looked at him in horror. No, he exploded. I made a promise to Arabella Gross to buy one of those little things. I'll pay the rent when it is time. Bellone knew he had blundered. When you lay on that beach at Seaside, God floated the little rowboat to you. Do you think the good God did it so you could buy silk drawers for a cannery slut? <laughs> no, God did it so you would not die from sleeping on the ground in the cold. Do you think God is interested in Arabella's breasts? And besides, we will take a $2 deposit, he went on. For $1, you can get one of those things big enough to hold the udders of a cow. Still, Jesus Maria protested. I will tell you, Pilon went on, unless we pay Danny two dollars, we shall all be turned into the street, and it will be your fault. You will have it on your soul that we sleep in ditches. Under so many shots coming from so many directions, Jesus Maria Corcoran Cor succumbed. He passed two of the crumpled bills to Pilon. Now the tense feeling went out of the room, and peace and quiet and warm, deep comradeship took its place. Pilon relaxed. Pablo took the comforter back to his own bed, and conversation sprang up. We must take this money to Danny, their first appetite over. They were sipping the wine out of fruit jars now. What is his great need Danny has for two dollars, Jesus Maria asked. Bilon grew confidential. His hands came into play like twin moths, restrained only by his wrists and arms from flying out of the door. Danny, our friend, is taking up with Mrs. Morales. Oh, don't think Danny is a fool. Miss Morales has two hundred dollars in the bank. Danny wants to buy a box of big candy for Miss Morales. Candy is not good for people, Pablo observed. It makes their teeth ache. That is up to Danny, said Jesus Maria. If he wants to ache Mrs. Morales' teeth, that is his business. What do we care for Miss Morales' teeth? A cloud of anxiety had settled on Bellone's face, but he interposed sternly. If our friend Danny takes big candy to Miss Morales, he will eat some too, so it is the teeth of our friend that will ache. Pablo shook his head anxiously. It would be a bad thing if Danny's friends, on whom he depends, should bring about the aching of his teeth. What shall we do then, asked Jesus Maria, although he and everyone else knew exactly what they would do. They waited politely, each one for another, to make the inevitable suggestion. 
The silence ran on. Below and Apollo felt that the suggestion should not come from them since by some lines of reasoning they might be considered interested parties. Jesus Maria kept silence and duty to his host, but when their silence made him aware of what was, what was required of him, he came instantly into the breach. A gallon of wine makes a nice present for a lady, he suggested in an amusing tone. Bilona and Pablo were astonished at his brilliance. We can tell Danny it would be better for his teeth to get wine. But maybe Danny will pay no heed to our warning. If you give money to that Danny, you can't tell what he will do with it. He might buy candy anyway, and then all our time and worry are wasted. They had made of Jesus Maria their feeder of lines, their opener of uneasy situations. Maybe if we buy the wine ourselves and then give it to Danny, there is no danger, he suggested. That is the thing, cried Pilon. Now you have it. Jesus Maria smiled modestly at being given credit for this. He felt that sooner or later this principle would have been promulgated by someone in the room. Pablo poured the, little, Pablo poured the last little bit of wine into the fruit jars and then they drank tiredly after their effort. It was a matter of pride to them that the idea had been arrived at so logically in such a philanthropic cause. Now I, am, now I am hungry, said Pablo. Bilon got up and went to the door and looked at the sun. It is afternoon, he said. Pablo and I will go to Terralis to get the wine while you, Jesus Maria, go into Monterey for something to eat. Maybe Mrs. Bruno on the wharf will give you a fish. Maybe you can get a little bread someplace. I'd rather go with you, said Jesus Maria, for he suspected that another sequence, just as logical and just as inevitable, was beginning to grow in the heads of his friends. No, Jesus Maria, they said firmly. It is now two o'clock or about that. In an hour it will be three o'clock. Then we will meet you here and have something to eat. Maybe a little glass of wine and go with it. Jesus Maria started for Monterey very reluctantly, but Pablo and Pilon walked happily down the hill toward Terrali's house. So what is he saying right here? Oh, they're taking it. I don't like fucking Pilon. Fuck Pilon. Pilon's a fucking user, bro. Pilon just uses people. I don't like that motherfucker. Fuck Pilon. <laughs> Yeah, peace.